Hello, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Esports and Gaming, the show where we talk about the latest and greatest in business happenings for gaming, esports, and career news. I'm your host, Mark Kai. We're here for the first week of July 2024. Let's dive right into it. For our first top three story, Jimmy Donaldson or Mr. Beast and Kai Sinat, they have partnered up. This was a surprise announcement collaboration that Mr. Beast will be joining Kai Sinat's stream. This took place around the July 4th time frame, which is uh, the U.S.'s Independence Day and saw Kai awarding $250,000 to viewers with a variety of ad integrations and uh, most notably a huge fireworks show at the very end, which was allegedly indoors. The stream peaked at over 450,000 concurrent viewers and saw promotions for T-Mobile and Feastables as well. This is the second most popular Kai Sinat that stream behind his June 11th Kevin Hart and Drewski stream that he did that peaked over 720,000 viewers. While the fireworks were in a room that was thought to be an imitation room of Kai's normal setup, it still ended up being pretty amusing and overall seeing one of the biggest streamers and one of the biggest YouTubers collaborating is something that makes sense but it's also still surprising since these audiences are possibly completely different. We'll see who Kai and Mr. Beast uh, continue to partner with in the future as far as other content creators go. Lots of updates to the Esports World Cup, so let's just talk about them. The Esports World Cup has officially kicked off, and it seems that many organizations are partnering with the Esports World Cup at the final minute. Just to name a few, Bayz Esports and Great Esports partnered up to provide official data solutions for the event, which will drive match integrity and community engagement worldwide, according to the release. Star Sports Network have acquired the Esports World Cup broadcasting rights, which means eight of the 21 tournaments will be streamed on Star Sports YouTube channel alongside Star Sports TV channels in English and Hindi. Aramco will be the official partner of the esports world cup sim racing segment and honor will be the event's official smartphone provider and unilever will showcase its axe body spray and clear men products at the esports world cup additionally amazon's saudi and uae websites will advertise the esports world cup through a special esports world cup hub with special offers and information on the event jameel motorsport a part of abdul latif jameel motors will host a number of activations during the esports world cup such as karting vr racing and others and tiktok will also have an official entertainment platform uh, well, they will be that for the Esports World Cup with a dedicated hub on the app for coverage. So evidently, a lot of brand partnerships here. As per James Fudge's most recent article, it seems that the Saudi government is looking at the Esports World Cup on a few different metrics of success, one of which would be, as James puts it, uh, to convince the international esports community that this is one of the biggest events in this history of esports and overlook its social and cultural warts for the country. It seems that to make sense for the government with so many orgs, players, and brands partaking, there may be some success for the event overall. And it's yet to be seen how this monetary investment pays off though and if viewership numbers continue to uh, be on track for what the overall event wants it to be uh, but overall it seems like a lot of work has gone to ensuring that it does reach the masses for our final top three story, there are a lot of new Twitch announcements. Twitch recently announced a few changes that it's making to quote unquote uphold its mission to create belonging by enabling streamers to build community. Firstly, the company is redesigning the mobile app to quickly get users the content they want to watch, such as optimizing for clips, personalized feeds based on previous viewing, picture in picture feature for Android, and more. Uh, Twitch also announced Stream Together, which is a new tool that enables two creators to collaborate in real time. Streamers can see who else is open to collaborating and can accept requests from other streamers that quote unquote knock on their door, which instantly puts streamers in a video call where they're both live. Uh, the company also announced customized power-ups, which are interactions redeemed by the audience using bits to support creators. Thus far, there are three options, and Twitch is going to make them more interactive throughout the year. Interestingly enough, Twitch is also going to optimize clips for discovery and automatically generate a vertical version of the clip alongside any horizontal video versions. Vertical clips will automatically be shown to a mobile feed, so kind of like a YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and TikTok-esque move. There will also be a DJ enrollment program with DJs with a category going live later in the summer and Twitch looking to promote DJ content in the future. And creator clubs were also announced, which is a new program aimed at helping streamers find communities around shared interests with other streamers. And this will be av uh, available and open to affiliates and partners. This is not a comprehensive list of changes, however, it encompasses quite a few of the initiatives that Twitch is working on. So curious to see how the community will react as these changes roll out. As far as partnerships go, NASCAR partnered with Carta. This is a partnership with the UK-based Metaverse Studio, and we'll see the Chicago Street Course integrated into Rocket Racing in Fortnite with additional tracks to come. Players will navigate multiple routes and master various areas like speed, drifting, and obstacles, and this seems like a smart move for NASCAR to engage a new audience, with Nick Rend of NASCAR mentioning how this collaboration aims to build something with longevity for both diehard NASCAR enthusiasts and the wider Fortnite community. 100 Thieves partnered with Google Play and Niantic. The Google Play will support a range of activations and experiences during the Pokemon Go Fest with apparel drops and meet and greets with 100 Thieves creators to come as well. Rauki Ray, Yelona Garcia, and Fusely, along with other talent, will be participating as a part of these Park Play sessions. 
OG Esports partners with the crypto liquidity provider Wintermute. The two orgs originally partnered in 2020 and have worked together to explore collaboration possibilities between esports trading and crypto. Wintermute specifically focuses on digital assets and has partnerships with over 100 investments at the moment. And this partnership will aim to develop ideas for long-term value creation. As far as finance and M&A goes, EQT Group are going to acquire Keyword Studios for £2.2 billion. While the deal is still pending approval from shareholders, the agreement reached a cash acquisition term of 24.5 pence per share. The acquisition is expected to complete later this year, with the board saying the business is well positioned for future continued success. Keyword Studios currently supports the likes of Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Epic Games, Square Enix, Bethesda, Netflix, Riot Games, Supercell, Take-Two Entertainment, Tencent, and many others as well. Sporty Group have acquired Sociable Soccer. The acquisition will see the arcade-style football game series now become a part of Sporty Group, which is the company's first entry into the mobile and video gaming market. The Sociable Soccer 24 game is released on Steam and Switch already and is set to launch on Xbox and PlayStation later this year. Quayley have acquired a 3.58% minority stake in Devolver Digital. This 3.58% stake contributed to Devolver Digital raising around $10 million through its equity placing, which aimed to boost its balance sheets. The move increases Quayley's exposure and access to PC and console game production in addition to its own significant standing in the mobile market. Slay have secured $5 million in a funding round. Slay will use this funding to build out its social gaming platform. For reference, Slay is behind the virtual pet game Pengu, which contributes to Slay's 2.5 million monthly active users and 650,000 daily users across all of its games and applications. The round was led by Excel, with participation from others like Leighton VC, Scooter Braun, Ilka Pananen, and others. As far as workforce changes go, Jarrett West joins Roblox as the Chief Marketing Officer. Jarrett has a plethora of experience in gaming and entertainment. He was the Chief Marketing Officer at Xbox for the past four and a half years, and before that spent seven years at Netflix overseeing marketing for various regions around the world, including EMEA, North America, and APAC. He also spent time at Xbox before he did uh, his stints at American Express and Netflix as well for eight years at Net, uh, Xbox, and he holds an MBA from the Thunderbird School of Global Management. Ali Hayhe has been promoted to VP of Sponsorships at Sentinels. Ali has a lot of esports experience with sponsorships and marketing, and she's been in Sentinels for over two years now and has spent over five years at TSM in the past doing partnerships and marketing as well as account management. She was also a social media and operations manager at Team Liquid in the past, so congrats to you on your promotion, Ali. Stephanie Hawkins has been promoted to Director of Gaming at Wavemaker US. Stephanie's been with Wavemaker for two years now and was an Associate Director for Sports Live and Gaming before promotion. She also spent time with Immortals as a Director for Partnership Activation and she spent time as an English teacher in Japan and did marketing for Zodiac Flight Innovations in the past as well. She holds a Master's of Legal Studies in Entertainment Law from UCLA. Jesse Houston joins Griffin Gaming Partners as a venture partner. Jesse was most notably the co-founder and CEO of Phoenix Labs for over nine years from 2014 to 2023. Afterwards, he co-founded Critical Path Games and now joins Griffin Gaming Partners on the venture side. He has also held production roles with Riot Games, Ubisoft, and Bioware in the past. Amit Kumar Shindi has joined Super Gaming as a Senior Marketing Manager. Amit Kumar was previously a Marketing Manager at Krafton for two and a half years and previously also did Digital Marketing for Coup India. He has held a variety of other experiences with Yuzu Games and others as well. And it's a Master's in Marketing from MIT School of Business in India. Mikhail Boisman has been promoted to Principal Market Analyst at Nuzu. Mikhail has been with Nuzu for over seven years now and has moved his way up from Market Analyst to Senior Market Analyst, now to Principal. He's overseeing a team and serving as the primary project lead in a variety of projects and yields a Master's in International Economics and Business from the University of Groningen. Brandon Painter joins Enthusiast Gaming as a Brand Solutions Lead. Brandon has a good amount of experience in gaming and esports as he was most recently the VP of Brand Strategy for GameSquare Holdings from May 2023 to May 2024. Before that, he was an Associate Director for Zero Code, working on gaming and esports campaigns for a variety of clients and brands. He holds a Bachelor's of Marketing from Kansas State University. Johnny San has been appointed Chief Business Officer at AFK Mina. Johnny has been with AFK for nearly four years now, most recently holding the title of Head of Talent Sales and Operations for the past year. He moved up from his roles in talent management and agency relations as well as sales, and he worked in hospitality management for over 11 years before esports, so congrats to you on your move, Johnny. Jonathan Stringfield joins Microsoft as a VP of Global Revenue and Business Planning for Microsoft Advertising. He's a lot of experience in various marketing insights and analytics roles as he was most recently the VP of Global Business Research and Marketing at Activision Blizzard for six and a half years. I guess this role is more of a switch since Activision Blizzard was acquired by Microsoft, so they're the same company theoretically. Before Activision Blizzard, he was with Twitter for nearly five years doing marketing insights and also spent time at Facebook as well. He was a PhD in quantitative sociology from the University of Illinois, Chicago. 
Sebastian Gold has been promoted to Chief Marketing Officer at Inno Games. Sebastian's been with Inno Games for 12 and a half years now. Most recently, he was Director of Growth for around a year, and before that, he did marketing for business development and performance channels as well. He holds a Master's in Industrial Engineering from Fash Hochschule Wiedel University of Applied Sciences. Jason Fung joins EverReach Labs as the Chief Marketing Officer. Jason was most recently CEO at MetaZero, which was focused on blockchain for Web3 gaming. Before that, he spent two years at ByteDance as the Global Head of Strategy and Operations for Gaming, and he was the Senior Director for Global Esports at Alibaba and spent time in a variety of other gaming roles as well. He holds a Bachelor's in Marketing and International Business from the University of Toronto. Alex Chiricosta joins Riot Games as an event production manager for Southeast Asia. Alex joins Riot Games in Singapore to build out events for esports there, and previously he did esports events with Twitch for Twitch Rivals as a senior program manager for nearly four years. Before that, he spent two and a half years at Red Bull overseeing gaming for the Southwest region, and he also worked at ESL as well doing events before. He holds a bachelor's in radio TV production from the University of Central Florida. As far as new stuff goes, PUBG Mobile Global Open is set to take place in 2025 in Uzbekistan. While the exact venue and date have not yet been revealed, it shows a push from PUBG Mobile's esports team to push into areas where the game maybe hasn't mentioned him before physically. Uzbekistan has not really hosted any major international esports events, though they do have a considerable PUBG Mobile regional esports community. That's it for this week in esports and gaming. Thank you so much for tuning in and credit to the authors and brands themselves for the images and information provided. Shout out once again to uh, James Fudge and the Esports Advocate. If you want to go show some support down below, click their link in the comments. And same thing with Invest Game for providing insight and investments in the gaming and esports space. You can subscribe to their newsletter in the comments below. As always, everybody, if you want to show some support to me, either share this with your audience or tag someone who'd find this valuable and have a great weekend or great rest of your day.